All right, thanks for clicking on this video. Grab some paper, grab something to write with and a calculator, and follow along as we go through the 2023 ICTM Regional A Pre-Calculus Contest. So number one reads, one point is selected at random from this set. We want to determine the probability that the graph of the point selected is selected as below the x-axis. So that means the y value, whatever it is, has to be less than zero. So as I look through these, I'm going to highlight the ones where the y value is less than zero. All right, so that means we have three of them out of a total of six. So that means we have a probability fraction of one half. Number two, we have this vector and this vector. And so this is a true or false. Yes or no. This vector has the same direction as this vector. Now, one may be tempted to say, well, take the rise over the run, or the delta y over delta x. And so we have negative 4 over 10, which is negative 2 fifths. And then over here, we have 6 over negative 15, which also simplifies to negative 2 fifths. And the temptation is to say yes, but it's actually no. And the reason is, is because this one goes 10 to the right and down 4, whereas the other one goes to the left 15 and then up 6. So they're actually, even though they would be sort of collinear if they were mounted, uh, if they both started at the origin, they are pointed in the opposite direction. In this problem, we want to figure out what is the perimeter of this isosceles triangle. Now they tell us that it has a base of length 35 and a vertex angle measuring 40 degrees. So if I draw my isosceles triangle, here's 40 degrees, here's 35. Now since we know that this is an isosceles triangle, I can figure out what are the two base angles. So I take 180 minus 40, that's 140. And then when I divide that by 2, we get 70 degrees here and 70 degrees here. Now what we need to do is we need to split this triangle right down the middle by drawing the altitude. Now when we do that in an isosceles triangle, this means that our base is perfectly bisected. Now what we want is we want to figure out what are these values right here. Now, 17.5, that is adjacent to 70. And x is the hypotenuse. So cosine of 70 degrees, that's going to equal 17.5 over x. So if I multiply x over x, cosine of 70 degrees equals 17.5. And then cosine of 70 is a number. And I'm going to divide that over to the other side. So I have 17.5 over cosine of 70. Now that's in degrees. So I need to check to be sure that my calculator is in degree mode, and it is. So I have 17.5 divided by cosine of 70. Now, notice that it says as a decimal. So that means this is one of the two sides. So I need to double that. Whoops. So times 2. And then I need to add 35. So when we do, we need to round this to the nearest thousand. So 137.333. And there is our perimeter. Number four. When vector u and vector v are given, we have 7 plus k, 5 for vector u, and 2 comma 13 for vector v. Now the dot product is 45. So we want the value of k. Now we get the dot product by multiplying the corresponding parts and then adding them. So we have 7 plus k times 2 plus 5 times 13. And all of that equals 45. So if I distribute the 2, I get 14 
plus 2k plus 5 times 13 that's 65 equals 45 so when we combine those two 14 and 65 make 79 and then when we subtract 45 minus 79 we get negative 34 and then when we divide by 2 this gives us our value of k of negative 17. Number 5. Here we have these two parametric equations x equals 5 plus 6t and y equals negative 8 plus 10t. Now they can be rewritten in this form. Now notice what letter is not there. It's t. t is not there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation for x and I'm going to solve that for t. So I'm going to subtract 5 to the other side and then I'm going to divide by 6. So now I can substitute this into this equation over here. So y equals negative 8 plus 10 times x minus 5 all over 6. So first thing, I want to get rid of the 6. So I'm going to multiply everything times 6 so that I can cancel that away. So 6y equals negative 48 plus 10 times x minus 5. So next I will distribute in the 10 and then we can combine like terms. So 6y equals 10x minus 98. Now Notice that they give us a few caveats. A, B, and C are relatively prime integers. That means they have no common factor. Well, we can divide out a 2 from all three of these. So we have to. So that means we have 3y equals 5x minus 49. Now they are all relatively prime. They have nothing in common. But that is not the only caveat. They also say that A has to be positive. So 5 is the value for A, and that's positive. And in this equation, everything is on one side, and it's equal to 0. So that means that this 3y has to go over to the other side. So 0 equals 5x minus 3y minus 49. So now we have our values for A, for B, and for C. So now we want to figure out 5 minus 3 minus 49. And that value will be, let's see, 2 minus 49, so that's negative 47. So that is our value. All right, number 6. The side lengths of a right triangle are all positive integers. Two of the side lengths are 39 and 89. Determine the value of the tangent of the smallest angle of this right triangle. All right, so we have two possibilities here. One possibility is in this right triangle that the two numbers that they gave us are legs. The other possibility is that 89 is the hypotenuse. Now they say they are all positive integers. So let's apply the Pythagorean theorem. So 39 squared plus 89 squared. And then we take the square root of that, 9442. And so 97.1, da, da, da. so now we know that this is not the situation. What we want is we want this triangle. So to apply the Pythagorean theorem here, I have to take 89 squared and then subtract 39 squared, and we get 6,400. And when we take the square root of that, we get 80. Okay. 
Now, this is our triangle. Now they want the value of the tangent of the smallest angle. Well, the smallest angle is opposite the smallest side. So that means we're talking this angle down here, and we want tangent. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that means 39 over 80. And 39 can only be broken up into 3 and 13, and 80 can't be broken up by 3 or 13, so that means that is our reduced improper fraction. So number 7. So here they say the graph of this has an oblique or slant asymptote. Now when x equals 100, the graph of this has a distance of k units above or below L. So we want to determine the value as a decimal rounded to the nearest thousandth. So the first thing we have to do is we have to figure out what is the equation of that slant asymptote. Now some people like synthetic division. I'll show you how we do this. So we take the values, the, uh, I'm sorry, the coefficients in front of x squared x at 1. And then we figure out, all right, what value makes the 0? We put that in the box. Bring down the 1 times the number in the box. So we have 2. Combine these two. We have negative 5 times the number in the box, negative 10. And that leaves us with negative 9. Now, that means that this is equal to x minus 5 minus 9 over x minus 2. The negative 9 is our remainder. And so the part that divided out, this is our slant asymptote. Okay. So what we want to know is which one is higher or lower when x equals 100. So let's bring back out our calculator. And we're going to type these both in. So first, I'm going to type in the function itself, x squared minus 7x plus 1, all of that divided by x minus 2. And then our slant asymptote of x minus 5. Now we're going to set our table to our value of 100, because that's the only value we care about. And I go to that value, and so we see that this is the actual function value, 94.908, and the asymptote is 95. So if we think about it like this, here's our asymptote, and our actual function is beneath it. So here we've got 95, and here we've got 94 point 908. So that means we want to know how much above or below that is. So we'll take 95 minus 94.908, and so that gives us 0 0.092, and it is below. So we write below, and we write it as this ordered Pair. That's how they want us to write our answer. Okay, number eight. Here we have triangle ABC, and it has these dimensions. AB is 5, AC is 7, and angle A is 23. So A, B, C. So we have angle 23. AB is 5, AC is 7. Now we want to figure out the measure of angle B. Now in order to do that, first thing we need to do is we need to figure out what this length is. And that's going to require law of cosines. So A squared, so we'll call this A, equals 5 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 5 times 7 times cosine of 23 degrees. So. 5 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 5 times 7 
times cosine of 23. Now all of that is equal to that value squared, so I'm going to take the square root of that. So we get 3.092678.4. Now we're not done, so I need a few more decimals just as an insurance policy. Because what we want is we want angle B. Now what we can do is we can use law of cosines again. So 7 squared equals 5 squared plus 3.092678.4. Squared minus 2 times 5 times 3.092678.4 cosine of b. Now, in the calculator, take square root of the answer that I'm going to store that for x so I don't have to keep typing it in. All right, so 7 squared. Now, I need to subtract 5 squared and I need to subtract. Uh, x squared, and then I need to divide by negative 2 times 5 times x, and then I need to take cosine inverse of the answer, and we get 117.824. Now, it's better to use law of cosines instead of law of sines, because law of sines would give you an acute, and you would have to realize that this was actually an obtuse result. Law of cosines will never give you that problem. Law of cosines, if it's, a, if it's obtuse, it will give you an obtuse angle. So if you look at other solutions, you'll notice that it's law of cosines that was used. Number 9. Here we have that a and b are both greater than 1. Then b is equal to a to the k power, when log of a2 equals log b8. So I'm going to use the change of change of base formula and rewrite this as log 2 over log a and that equals log 8 over log b. Now log 8 is really 2 to the third and that's useful because using log properties I've got I can bring out that 3 out in front. 3 log 2 over log b. So now if I bring this over, I've got log 2 over log a, 3 log 2 over log b. So now log 2's can cancel out so we have 1 over log a equals 3 over log b. And so what we have is we have a proportion, but really all I want to do is multiply log b over to the other side. So I have log b over log a, and that equals 3. Now using the change of base formula, this is log of a, log base a of b. Alright, now this right here is exactly what I want, because I can take this and, and not erase it, but instead rewrite it as a to the third power equals and that's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the value of k. And k, for this problem, turns out to be 3. So I had to use the change of base formula in order to cancel out the log 2, and then I had to use the change of base formula to put it back as log base a of b, so that when I rewrote it, it was a to the third power equals b. That's how we did that problem. For number 10, for permissible values of x, this expression can be re rewritten as k times tangent of x. So what is the value of k? All right, so notice first that we can factor a 4 out of the top and a 2 out of the bottom. 
So we have 1 plus tangent of x when I factor out the 4. Here, I have 1 plus cotangent x when I factor out the 2. Now let's put this all in terms of just tangent of x. Now, if I multiply the top and the bottom by tangent, okay, now I can simplify the 4 and the 2 to just 2 on the top. Now I'm going to leave the tangent of x out of this parentheses on top, and you'll see why in a second. But on the bottom, we're going to have tangent of x plus 1. That's what I get when I multiply this tangent times 1 and this tangent times 1 over tangent. But notice what happens. I can cancel this out, and we're left with just 2 times tangent of x. And that right there is our value of k that we are looking for. So k equals 2. There's our answer. Number 11. School nurse took Smart Alex's temperature and reported 98.6 degrees. Smart said, can you give me that in radians, please? The nurse said, that's nonsense, but cute. For your information, though, my calculator shows that it's K. So what is the value of K? As a decimal, rounded to the nearest thousandth. So we have 98.6 degrees, and we need to convert that. So our conversion factor is pi radians over 180 degrees. So we'll get out our calculator. So 98.6 times pi divided by 180. And we get rounded to the nearest thousandth, we get 1.721. Number 12. The integer k is a multiple of 3, such that k factorial ends in exactly 27 zeros. So what is the greatest possible value of k? So let's think about some factorials. Now 5 factorial is 120, and now it has 1 zero. Get out my calculator, make this a little easier. Now 10 factorial has 3, 6, 2, 8, 8, 0, 0. Now that has two zeros. Now what about 15 factorial? Well, it's scientific notation, so it doesn't help us very much. But what's happening here is the reason that we have only one zero for 5 factorial. So we have 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. In order to get this 0, I need a 10. And I get a 10 by taking 2 and 5. Now for 10 factorial, we get 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7 times 8 times 9 times 10. Now, I've got a 10, but where's that other 0 coming from? Well, it's coming from the 5 and the 2. Now, I have extra 2's in the form of 4 and 8, but those don't help unless I've got a 5 that can help me turn them into 10's. So, in a sense, what we're asking for, really, is we want a number that when we take the factorial, it has 27 factors of 5. So, let's see. Let's start with 100. How many factors of 5? Well, it's got 20. But then, what about 25, 50, 75, 100? Well, if I take 20 and divide by 5, I get 4. So if I took 100 factorial, I would have 20 plus 4, I would have 24 zeros. Unfortunately, that is 
too small. And it's not a multiple of 3. So what about 120? That's a multiple of 3. So if I divide that by 5, 120 factorial is 24. And then I divide that by 5, and I get 4. So this gives me 28 zeros. The fact that I have a decimal means that I'm close to another factor of 5 here, but I'm just not quite there yet, so we can ignore that. But 120 is too big. So what about 117? That's the next number down. If I divide that by 5, we get 23.4. Now I have to ignore the 0.4. So if I divide by 5, I get 4, so we get 27. So that's why 117 is the number that has 27 trailing zeros. Number 13, Serena Williams, a professional tennis player, succeeds in getting 75% of her first serves in play. When she misses on the first serve, she gets 90% of her second serves in play. She wins 80% of the points when she gets her first serve, but only 35% when she gets her second serve. She wins a point on her serve. Determine the probability it was on her first serve. All right, so, so on her first, Okay, so she makes, and she misses. Now that probability is 0.75 for the make and 0.25 for miss. Now, we branch off again. So on the second serve, 0 0.9, 0 0.1. Now these are the probabilities that she makes it, but then we have to then multiply by the probability that she gets the point. So 0.75 has to be multiplied by 0.8, and 0.9 has to be multiplied by 0.35, because on the first serve she makes 80% of the points, and but only 35 on the second. So in all, let's get out our calculator, so they said she wins a point on her serve. So what's the chances of this happening? So it's 0.75 times 0.8 plus 0.9 times 0.35. So in all, we have 0.915. That's our denominator, because that's all the possible probability that could have happened. But what we're focusing on is what's the probability it was on her first serve. So we're looking at this. So 0.75 times 0.8. 8 is our numerator. Then we're going to divide that by 0.915. All right. Now we want it as an integer or as a common fraction. All right. Let's see if my calculator can do it. Yep, there it is. We get 4140 over 61. There we go. 14. The endpoints of the major and minor axes of this ellipse are joined to form a convex parallelogram within the ellipse. All right, let's see if we can bend this. Nope. Let's try again. All right, there we go. That's a bit better. Now we've got a parallelogram inside it. Now the important thing first is to denote what are the lengths of the major and minor axes. So we've got 7 and 11. And then we've got 7 and 11 again. Now with an ellipse, the axes meet at a right angle. Important detail. So we want the numeric area of this parallelogram. Well this parallelogram is really just two triangles put back to back that have a base of 22 and a height of 7. So that means if I multiply these two, 22 times 7 whoops, there's my calculator 
22 times 7, we get 154. So that is the area of that parallelogram inside that ellipse. Now, where did the 11 come from? From 121. And we got 7 from 49. And that's because with an ellipse, it's x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. Where a and b, those are the lengths of the major and minor axes from the outer edge to the center. So 15, determine the sum of all integer values of a, such that ax squared plus 5x minus 6 equals a has complex non-real roots. Well, it's quadratic, and so with quadratics, we want them equal to 0. So we're going to start with ax squared plus 5x minus 6, and we're going to subtract the a to the other side so that it equals 0. Now, using our quadratic formula, this is a, this is b, and this is c. Now, it has complex non-real roots. That right there tells us that b squared minus 4ac, our discriminant, is going to be less than 0. So, if we write this, so 5 squared minus 4 times a times negative 6 minus a, it's not going to be equal to 0, it's going to be less than 0. So 25 plus 24a plus 4a squared is going to be less than 0. So now, what we've got is now we've got this second quadratic that we're going to apply the quadratic formula again. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. All right, so inside we've got 24 squared minus 4 times times 4 times 25. So 176, and so the square root of 176 is 13.266. So negative 24. Over 8. All right, so you got negative 24 plus 13.266. All that divided by 8. So, negative 1.34175. Now we'll take this, and now we will subtract. And then divide that by 8. So negative 4.65825. These are the two solutions for when this is equal to 0. But this is a parabola that's opening upwards. So if I draw this picture... Here's what we're looking at. So we just identified the two roots for this parabola, the values of a. So negative 4.6 dot dot dot, negative 1.3 dot dot dot. What we care about is we care about the integer values. So what are the values that are integers that fall between here and here? Because we want it when it's less than zero. So that's this part down here. So we've got negative 4, negative 3, and negative 2. Those are the three integers. So if I want the sum, I want negative 4 plus negative 3 plus negative 2. That gives me a sum of negative 9. Number 16. The manager of Zaza's department store notices that every time she has a weekly sales event, totally weekly profits permanently increase by 6% starting today and assuming this constant rate. She must hold K weekly sales events in order for her total weekly profits to increase by at least 50% over today's profits. So what is the value of K? 
Now, what they don't tell you is that k has to be an integer because you have to have an integer number of weekly sales. Now, if you want to increase by 6%, that means you need to take 1 and then add 0 0.06. And we have to do that a certain number of times, and that's k. And we want this to be greater than 1 plus 0.5. So 1.06 to the k is greater than 1.5. Now, I'm just going to use the calculator approach. 1.06 squared, nope, cubed, the fourth, the fifth, sixth, seventh. There we go. So now it's bigger than 1.5, and that's what we need. Number 18. Several bingo-loving members of Golden Years Manor decide to select from their group a committee of K people to be the weekly setup committee, with K being fewer than half the members in the group. Assume the group consists of less than 20 residents. So one of them, a retired math teacher, quickly figured out that there were 210 possible committees. Moments after their agreement on the number of committee members, another bingo lover joined the group, and the group agreed to put one additional member on the committee. So what's the number of committee makeup possible under the new agreement? Now, keyword here is committees. That means we're talking about combinations. Now, this number here is less than 20. And K is being fewer than half the number of people in the group. So this number is half of N or less than half of n. But we know that whatever numbers we have, we're going to get 210 possible committees. And so part of this depends on how familiar are you with the outcomes that you get with NCR. So if I have 8C4, well, that's too small. So I need to go bigger. So what about 12 C6? Okay, too big. So let's cut that in half. 10 C5? No, 10 C4. There we go. Now technically we would have 10 C4, and that equals 10 C6, but again, we said that K is equal to less than half of N. So that means what we're looking at is we're looking at this. So that means there are 10 residents and 4 on the committee. Now they tell us they want to put one additional member on the committee, but we have one new resident. So that means we have 11 C5. So if I change this to 11C5, we get 462. All right. Number 19. Let kx represent the degree measure of the angle whose radian measure is x. The least positive value for x, for which the graphs of cosine x, now this is in radians, and cosine kx intersect is w. So we want to determine the value of w as a decimal rounded to the nearest thousandth. Okay, so x is in radians. Now if I want to turn that into degrees, I'm going to multiply 180 over pi radians. So that means this is what k is equal to. And so what we're going to do is we're going to graph cosine x and cosine of 180 over pi x. And we want to find the smallest value for which they intersect each other. So we have cosine x and we have cosine of 180 over pi times x. And we need to be sure that we are in radian mode for this. So, so, zoom, trig, let's try that. Okay, the, uh, 
this one is way too packed in. So let's get rid of all the negatives and let's cut that down to one. Let's try that. Okay, so we want the smallest positive value. So they actually intersect at zero. We're not interested. We're interested in that right there. So this is less than 0.2 for an x value. So make that 0.2. Okay, that's a bit better. Now it's between 0.08 and 0.12. Right. Okay, getting better. Now let's exp let's get in close. Whoops, can't really see that. All right, still want to get in as close as I can. So I'm going to make my Y min 0.9 and my Y max 1.1. Uh, now I can easily see that value right there. So I'm going to trace, I want to find the intersection. All right, so so my intersection is point zero one zero seven eight eight, which rounded is point one zero eight. All right, number twenty, the one hundredth term of this sequence is ten to the k power. So what is this value? Now this sequence is weird because it doesn't follow one pattern, it follows two patterns. And they alternate. And that is, we've got 1 squared, but it's 2 to the 4th. 3 is squared, but then 4 is to the 4th. 5 squared, then we've got 6 to the 4th. So if I go out to 100, the 100th term is going to be 100, but it's going to follow the even pattern. So that's going to be to the fourth power. Well, k is not to the f not 4 because we want our base to be 10. So instead of 100, I'm going to write 10 squared to the fourth. And so what we have is we have powers on powers. So when we have powers on powers, we multiply. And so we get 10 to the eighth power. And so that is the value of k that we're looking for. So k is equal to eight. All right. Thanks for watching. If you like this, give it a thumbs up or share with some of your teammates.